Well, on this episode, Masahiro Takanashi of Choco Pro produced one interesting show called The Return of Yoparai, which took place on the 1st of October. We even got New Japan Pro Wrestling with Day 8 of the G1 Climax with B-Block action going on. We even got AEW Rampage. As you know, we got, of course, Daniel Br- uh, Br- uh, Brian Danielson taking on Nick Jackson. And, of course, our main event is hair versus hair match. And, of course, 205 Live. So, let's get started with another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that it's pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Right here. So let's review first the latest show by Masahiro Takanashi. Now, for those who don't know who he is, he is this wrestler who ha- who's been around with DDT. A close friend of Emi Sakura, and he's been mostly been booking matches now with Choco Pro. Now that Emi Sakura went full time with AEW, but he decided to produce a show himself at Jinjuko Face, which is a very popular venue for wrestling promotions out there in the independent scenes. So it was a pretty good one. I have to say it was very interesting, and of course I did notice that many of the, the people involved in Choco Pro. Did help out, like clean the ring because they had to disinfect it due to the coronavirus. Others were helping out with other things, like uh, Sarui was helping out with the searchlights, all of the spotlights, you know, whatever you want to call it. But let's go with the first match, which was um, basically we got a dark mat, dark tag team match. We have Dragon Sakurabo, Ro Kenjin Hananji, and Tiger. See, sing Juku Sami Gugao. You know, it's a long, long name. Taking on Antonia Honda and Gota I- Ihashi, along with Kudo and Sayaka Obihiro. Now, this match basically was a three on one scenario. Now, as you know, Antonia Honda will try to pull off his usual tricks to gain a victory, but however, it was him who pulled it off. But however, to their the losing team did not take that lightly, and they attacked Ihashi and dragged him out. Now our next match is a tag team match in the women's wrestling. We have Yuna Mizumuri teaming with Mei Shiruga, taking on Rina Yamashita, and of course Saki Akai. It's kind of interesting to see this match because it was a very interesting. You normally Yuna. And May don't normally tag that much, but it was interesting to see them. And however, Rina, who is the hardcore uh, star in the death matches, and Saki from DDT, well, and that's pretty much it. It was a pretty good match. There were some fun moments, but however, it was um, Rina who pinned Yuna. This time it was for good, and she allowed herself to win the match. Now, our next match, it was Ken Oka, who also is from DDT, taking on DJ Nira. If you remember him, DJ Nira was the one who got into a no contest with Balianaki. However, that ma- this match also ended up in a no contest. There was It was out of control. DJ Nira did not know what to do. He just completely lost it. Whew. Excuse me. Our next match is a six-man tag team match. We got... Seto Mizuki, consisted of Daiki, Shimomuri, and Asami Kodaka teaming on with Yuzo Urani. Take, their opponents is Kazusada Iguchi, 
Ken45, and Manjimaru. Manjimaru. I have to say it was a very interesting match because if you guys know who the, the first team are, they are they are deathmatch wrestlers, which is pretty cool. However, when it comes to the opposing team, they were able to get the job done all thanks to Iguchi's powerhouse style that always helps him win his matches. Finally, our next match, we have Balianaki taking out Kenichiro Arai. It was a very strong match. Kenichiro dressed up in his gi and somehow was able to pull a fast one on Balianaki. Balianaki cannot believe it. He kicked out, but it was already a second too late. And that's pretty much how it ended. Now, our main event is Brom Key, Brahmam Shu, along with Gorgeous Mansuno taking on CDK, uh, CDK, Chris Brooks, and Masahiro Takanashi. As you know, the Bron, K, and Shu are always bringing their toys along. These guys have been in the deathmatch scene a lot, but it was their tech, their deathmatch scene style of wrestling that allowed them to win. And of course, it ended in that in their favor by using suitcases and whatever they can find. So I think that's I think that's pretty much it. So let's move on with New Japan. Alrighty then, so we're now in day 8 of the G1 Climax by New Japan Pro Wrestling. I can tell you right now that the opening match is a young lion versus an experienced wrestler. We got Rohi Oiwa taking on Kana, uh, Yoshinobu Kanamaru. You can guess right away that of course Kanamaru won because that's how it always ends. The young lions, they rarely get their wins done, but... This time it did. It, that, it went into Kanamaro's spot because it's not much of important. But it was more like an opening match just to get people excited for the G1. Well, now we get to the G1 matches for the B, uh, B blocks. First one we have Tama Tonga taking on Jeff Cobb. Now this was a very interesting match. As you know there have been those are saying that Jeff Cobb is the fan favorite to win the tournament. Now, however, currently right now he is undefeated. He was able to defeat um, Tamatanga in, of course, the Tour of the Islands. Give me a minute. Uh, sorry about that. Oh. Anyway, so it, that's how it ends. So Tamatanga did not win this one whatsoever. Our next match is a Bullet Club Showdown. We have Chase Owens taking on Evil. Now, this is exactly what I said. This is nothing compared to what happened with Kenta versus Yujiro because Kenta, he's cool with everyone. But, however, there is talk about there. there's some sort of friction going on with Bullet Club due to the fact Jay White feels that he's being overshadowed by someone else's orders. According to Nico, he tells me Jay White did not approve the idea of having show join Bullet Club. But that's another conversation for another time. But you can guess in this particular match, Dick Togo was an evil side, getting trying to make sure he wins. Evil is always will be evil, and that's what happens. He's been winning his matches at any cost, even if Dick Togo has to get involved. Our next match is Yoshihashi taking on Taichi. Now these guys have known each other; they haven't faced each other on one on one. These guys go back as young boy, the young lions or young boys, however you want to call them. It was very interesting. Now, to me, I would have thought Tai Chi would win this one after his little loss that he had the other time against Evil, forcing him to, to lose the match. However, this time he lost his second consistent win to Tai Chi. But however, this is Tai Chi's first win in the G1, and it's really cool that he's finally got one win so far. Our next match is Hiroki Goto taking on his boss, the leader of chaos, Kaguchika Okada. Now you would have guessed right away that this is one of this is going to be a tough battle. However, it was, but you know, Okada, he never gives up. He will do whatever it takes until he pulled off the Rainmaker and then the money clip. It's over. He won his match, and that's pretty awesome to watch. 
Now this next match we have the Sonata versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. It was a really interesting match. However, you got a, uh, the ace who people say he's probably in his like too old or whatever you want to call it, but he was able to put, hold his own with a guy like Sonata who is a fan favorite in the tournament. But however, it was Tanahashi that did it when he pulled off the belly flop or whatever he called that to win the match, and it's pretty cool. So right now we're gonna take the Saturday off, but the Sunday. That's when we continue more of G1. Well, um, I forgot this already. Uh, the point system for the G1. I messed up. I kind of stopped the video from there. But let's review the B block the point system right now. Sonata has two wins and two losses with a total points of four points. Tai Chi, two wins and two losses, four points. Yoshihashi, one win and three loss, which is the win that he obtained in this one. Hiroki Goto, no all losses, no wins so far. Jeff Cobb, eight points with all four wins. Evil, three wins and one loss. Chase Owens, um, no wins whatsoever, just losses. Kaguchika Okada, four wins, no losses. Hiroshi Tanahashi, three wins and one loss. And Tama Tonga, one win and three losses. So that's pretty much what's going on with it. Uh, as you can see from the point system in this one, I could see Okada and Jeff Cobb come across to each other in the finals in their respective blocks. And as for the B block, I would say I have Zack Sabre Jr. In, possibly in the finals. But who will catch up to him? Well, that's another question that we have to tell at another time. So, I think that's it. Let's move on with AEW Rampage. Okay, AEW Rampage. It opened up with Daniel, you know, Brian Danielson taking on Nick Jackson. Now, this was a very interesting match. A bit of the submission technical style coming from uh, Brian, uh, Brian Danielson. I have to say, it was a pretty amazing match. It was a good opener. I loved it, how it opened up with this match. But you know for a fact that Matt Jackson was going to be there. And, of course, the stooge, Brandon Cutler, was going to be there too. But, however, none of that helped because it was... Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson that forced, of course, Nick Jackson to tap out. But however, in the post-match, the Elite comes out. And then here comes Christian along with Jurassic Express. Becoming clear that this is a war between two different groups. Mostly with the Elite. But they still have, I don't know if they're going to come up with a name with this faction. With uh, Dan Brian Danielson, Frank Kazarian, Christian, uh, and course dress express that kind of fits in in a way but we'll see what happens then but the best part is of what's his name jungle boy put adam cole in a in the snare trap while of course daniel bryan put him in that little leg lock or whatever he called the yes lock or whatever they call it now and it kind of forced them to tap out now as you know, the feud between Team Taz and Brian Cage is still going. We haven't seen Brian Cage for some time. But of course, the feud between Starks and Cage rages on. Looks like this is now personal in every aspect. Now, our next match is a known disqualification match between three ladies who were at each other's throats at the Casino Battle Royale at All Out. We have Jade Cargill, Nile Rose, and Thunder Rosa. Now, this was a very interesting match, but however, it was not, I mean, Jade Cargill that win the match. But I think the most moment is when Thunder Rosa powerbombed Nile Rose into the chair, I mean, the, the, the table. But it was Jade who was able to pick up the victory in every aspect. Now, she could be one of those women that we can't see come for the AEW World Women's title. Now... As you know, things have been going award with Cody and the rest of Nightmare Family. Malika Blake sent a clear 
message to Cody about what he did to him when he missed him. But we'll see where they're going to go with that. Now we get to the main event. Hair versus Hair, Orange Cassidy and Jack Evans. It was a good match, but you know for a fact that Matt Hardy was going to interfere. He even called out the Butcher and the Blade along with the Bunny. However, here comes Chuck Taylor, Wheeler Yuta, and Chris Satline to block off. And then he, Matt Hardy called the remaining members of the AJ foe. But here comes Dark Order at the same thing. But it was, of course... Orange Cassidy with the Superman punch that allowed him to win the match. And of course, get your hair shaved. But we'll see. I can't wait to see what Jack Evans looked like with shorter hair. I think that's pretty much it what we got. So let's move on with 205 Live. Okay, the last thing I got for you all of you is 2055. We got the first match, the Singapore Sensation, Dante Chen taking on Malik Blade. Now, this is a very impressive wrestler, Dante Chen. Uh, born from Singapore, but moving to the States is a good thing because he wants to fulfill his dream. Um, but I have to say he's very impressive. Um, I know there is professional wrestling in Singapore. Um... I know there was a promotion there. I just don't remember which one is it. But Dante, Dante is so impressive, I have to say. I got to keep an eye on this guy. But he was able to pick up the victory in case you guys need to know about that. Next up we got is women's action. We got Amari Miller and Valentina Feroz once again at each other's faces. However, in this one, it ended favor in Amari picking up her first victory. Now, she has lost against... Valentina twice, but this time she gets the upper hand. Our ma main event is a tag match with Imperium, um, <coughs> Fabian Eichner, and Mart Bartel. This is a very interesting match taking on Trey Baxter and Ikamanjaro. Now, you know that Imperium, they despise everything that Ikamanjaro is. You know that they believe they're protecting the great sport of pro wrestling. And that's what they did. They take him out. They took out uh, Trey Baxter to pick up the victory. And I think that shows. However, it's still unclear whether their leader, Walter, will make the return. That is something I'm definitely going to look for when that day comes. So, I think that's pretty much it for 205 Live. So, I think I'm uh, going to end it with a closing part of the show. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this, you know, because I do, I apologize for yawning. I'm a bit tired because I had a lot of things going on. Coming up, we got Choco Pro 161, which is one of the last two events left in the season of Choco Pro. We got New Japan Fight Spirit Unleashed, but also the most recent shows won by uh, AAW Defining Moment. It took place on the 2nd. And, of course, we got on the 1st of May. And then, of course, there's VXS, uh, the Makal Valley. I don't know how to pronounce that. But it's a pretty good, interesting show to watch. I'm excited to see that. And I can't wait to review all of it. So, for now, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang.